Hey, we've got no time for some fancy video introductions because you have a PowerPoint presentation to give. Here is what we're going to cover. I'm going to make sure to add the three must have required slides. We'll look at adding the motion talking points and we're going to provide smooth transition from slide to slide and then finish up with a pro trick, a PowerPoint selection tool for the ultimate in slide management. Let's power up. As always, follow a clear creation strategy step by step. These steps have been detailed in my earlier four PowerPoint master series class, which if you want, look for the full tutorial playlist linked above. So on to number one, follow the plan. Idea driven presentations. Quite frankly, if your ideas are lousy or unfocused, you should just give up or start again in PowerPoint outline mode and nail down your idea based goals. Once done, jump over the design ribbon menu and select an appropriate design template to find the proper visual appearance to illustrate your slide deck. Then customize the individual slides. Whoa, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's stop here and look behind the curtains on the construct of this presentation because it has some sneaky, sneaky techniques. While it looks like a single ever changing slide, it's actually made up of seven individual slides. The first one created and then customized for each step. I'll come back and look more closely how you too can create this presentation slide of hands. Okay, back to step number three. With the design applied, you then customize each page to meet the individual slide goals with text formatting or adding tables or graphs. Step four is to review your work and do brutal editing to shine up your ideas. Step five is what we're going to be teaching in this tutorial that will bring life to each page with animation to focus your attention of your audience on your key ideas. And then to add the icing to the cake, slide transitions for smooth cinematic effects. Although maybe not this not so subtle checkerboard slide change or this flip transition. And finally, the more subtle fade out and fade in page transition. Let's go ahead and get into the details of setting the stage for your presentation. The three required slides for every presentation. The pitch slide, the strong closing slide, and the last ending slide. Let's see them. The first required slide is what I call the pitch. Other people might call it the agenda slide, which is typically the presentation overview to prepare your audience. But I recommend that you focus on your goal and make that your pitch agenda slide. All presentations are either an informed or a persuade presentation, and each has a different goal based pitch. An informed presentation is where you're making your audience smarter, better informed. It's explaining a complex concept or reporting on the status of a project. So in the informed pitch slide, prepare your audience for what they're about to learn. For the persuade presentation, you're attempting to change your audience mind and get them to agree with your perspective or to approve your project. For this pitch slide, you need to introduce the question to be answered and let them know you expect a decision at the end of the presentation. Don't give it away the answer quite yet. Just clearly state the question to be discussed. The pitch slide is typically the second slide after the title. The second must have slide is the closing slide. And it's not closing because it's at the end, but because you're completing the circle based on your pitch and literally closing the loop. You're bringing back the original pitch goals from the pitch slide. And you're either one for the informed presentation, making sure that your audience learned what was presented. The old, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. And for the persuade presentation, you must get the audience to commit to your request, call for the vote, ask for them to agree 
to take the requested actions. If you don't call for the participation and get their approval, you've lost your opportunity to influence the decision. So be bold and ask and call for the answer. Do not waste the presentation. And typically, this is the last slide of your presentation. Okay, okay, maybe not the last slide. As if it was the last slide, you risk transporting everyone into the dark void of a black screen if you push the button at the end of the slide and hit the PowerPoint in the presentation piece. So the last required slide, number three, is the exit slide. And this can be as simple as duplicating your title slide and moving it to the end. The title slide is a great bookend. You can also use it as a placeholder for an open-ended audience discussion without a non-relevance slide on the screen. Now, moving on to several special slide deck techniques to create more exciting slides. Side note, which we'll cover in a few moments, note that the color scheme changed from pink to green and still the same font style, the graphic geometry, but some different colors to indicate the change of a topic. The technique of the build slide. At the start, you saw what appeared to be an ever-changing slide covering the presentation creation process, but I took you on a side trip to show it was actually constructed with seven slides that look like they were built as a single slide. Let's take a little closer look. Create the first foundation slide and make it just right. Then duplicate it and alter the appearance to create the illusion of the step-by-step -step build. Next, repeat the duplication for as many build steps as your presentation requires. It's a subtle technique that keeps your audience focused on the slide animation. Here's a quick tip. Sometimes when your build is adding new objects or text, it makes sense to build the final completed slide first and then duplicate it and remove the elements in reverse order. An alternate technique is slide bullet point animation. This here is a single slide with all the bullet points, but I've enabled the animation tool to get the bullet points to appear with each click of the mouse or the presentation clicker. This way my audience does not get in front of my current talking points and I can focus their attention on what's important right now. In addition, you can animate not just lines of text, but also any object on the screen. There are tons of options for style, the speed, and even the ability to stack actions together so as to have both an entrance action and an exit action. That might be something as simple as just changing the color to green as I do here once I progress beyond that talking point. Let's go build this. Working in the normal view, I'm going to click the animation ribbon menu to bring up the tools. At the moment, nothing's animated yet. While this next step is not required, it is a slick trick to monitor the progress. So let's turn on the animation pane, which will show up on the right side of our screen. Yes, it's still empty. Now let's animate the title. Click on the title, then pick any of the mini animation choices. The green icons are traditional entrance animations. Here we go with the fly-in and get an instant preview. Note that this is our first animation and it's enumerated in the first place with the number one indicator next to the item and also in the animation pane. Let's launch the slideshow from this slide. All the main bullet point lines have not been animated, so they're instantly on the screen already with no title. However, with the click of the mouse or the remote, the title floats in from the bottom. Let's do this again for the rest of the bullet points, but we do not want to set them one by one by one, but we want to do it as a group to save some time. So the key trick here is to select the full text box, not the individual lines. Do not select the text, only the outside text box. This time, let's pick the tamer float in animation. And with a single click, all the text inside the text box placeholder becomes animated. And even more important is that each group is given a number to show the order 
of the appearance. I may default, they're grouped in paragraphs. We can see this more clearly if I go over to the animation pane and click the double down chevron arrows to expand the group. Since they're all selected, note the highlighting, I can do some basic effect option changes by clicking the down arrow on the action effect option icon and changing the direction of the float. I can also change from individual paragraphs to an instance of everything all at once. But if we want to get into detailed custom actions, select the object or text you want to modify. In this example, I must select just the first set of bullet points. And then in the animation pane, with them selected, I click the down arrow and find the effect options. This uncovers a wealth of controls, but for the time being, let's just change the after animation where I'll change the color of the text with the second mouse click command. Let's change it from black to green. Now, in the presentation mode, one click for the title, the second click is for all the bullet points, and the third click is to make the first set of bullet points fade to green. To learn more, check out our in-depth tutorial listed above. Slide transition effects is one of the most straightforward and elegant solutions to fix the on-stage abrupt slide change from page to page to page. Let's do it. You can do this from almost any view. And while I like the slide sorter today, I'm going to work in the standard normal view. At the moment, there's no transitions here. Simple enough. Go to the transition ribbon menu. I'm going to start on the third slide just so we can illustrate it. And when I select the push transition, it's vital to understand that the transition is coming from the previous slide above onto the side slide that's selected. And when I go to slide number four, I can choose a different type of transition. Some are subtle, some are wild, like the fall over, or even more so, the folding origami bird that flies away. And dropping down the list, you see a full complement of choices. Professionally, for my presentations, I want to focus on my slide message and not distract the audience with special effect slide changes. But as we sample this on our full screen, you can select the style that you believe fits your needs and your target audience. Lastly, I typically will just have one style and apply it to the entire presentation. Once again, one less distra distraction from my core message. The last trick is a pro tip for large presentations or special formatting, the section tool. The section tool is not seen by your audience, but it's a powerful way to organize your presentation. Here you see the section headings. But let's go do this live. Once again, this tool can be used in different views, but I prefer to switch over to the slide sort of view to get the bigger picture of our whole presentation. Adding a section label on a Windows computer is simple. Just right click before the start of the new section and add section. Then give it a name and click OK. PowerPoint is going to separate that group of slides from above into its own section. Let me do it again with the three required slide section set of pages. If you're on a Mac, then you need to click between the two slides and go to the home menu and click that drop down section action icon and click selection. And you get the same results using the menu for both Windows and the Mac. So what can you do with it now? To better navigate many slides, you could toggle the little triangle icon next to the section name to collapse or expand out that group of slides. Or even more excellent is the ability to drag and drop a whole section to a new location. Watch as I move the ending slide section up into the middle of the presentation. Fast and easy. But the best pro tip, which I promised to show you earlier, is the ability to change the color scheme of the section to indicate a change of topic. Let's say I decided I no longer like pink for the three required slide section. So I can just click on the section name and all four slides are now selected. And when I go to the design ribbon menu and the drop down on the various arrow, I can go to the colors and find a new color palette to change from pink to blue. This is super cool. And a great technique for your presentation to subtly 
lets your audience know that you're transitioning to a new topic with the use of visual color change clues. And of course, the next to the last slide is my closing slide where I bring back my agenda of what I promised to cover for you. Plus, it has my call to action, which is to go to the last tutorial about getting on stage to present your slideshow where I provide tips on not just running PowerPoint slideshows, but how to prepare your onstage performance to become a PowerPoint superstar. So click and power up.